Hello again guys. As you can see, my bee tree is still in place from the last video. Remember, this is no video for a complete beginner. So, okay, we, we left off with the bee tree, right? You all, uh, you all remember the bee tree. We talked about the clustered index table last time. And just a fresh reminder, we have the data in the pages. And in the root level and in the intermediate level, we have only the key, okay? So the, ne the more narrow the key is, the less on levels and intermediate nodes I have and the faster I am because I have to do less I.O. So far so good. We understood this in the last se session already. So what we now want to cover is, okay, this is a clustered index. Uh, but what, is the, what about non-clustered indexes? What are, they, what are they good for? We will see, right? So the thing is, Let's say I, I, I mean, I already uh, put a few more columns on my table. We had ID and name the last time as well. Now we have birthday, gender, and salary. So let's just fill out a quick example, right? It doesn't matter. It, it's, it's not about the numbers or the genders or the birth dates or whatever. So this is the table. So now I may, uh, we already saw that if I look for the ID, for a special ID, for instance, for ID 5, we can just traverse through this B tree and have real quick our answer, right? But what is what if you want to have uh, all the Millers and all the Sunnies or all the Smith? What are we doing then now? Okay, we have no B tree for this, right? So we have only the ID key in those nodes. So we cannot traverse this tree on base of these names. We would have to build another tree that is on the base of IDs. So what we also can do is. We laid a clustered index on this, but this is a very bad idea. Don't do this, okay? Clustered index on, uh, very, uh, on character uh, types is not a good idea at all, especially if it's not unique, it's not a good idea. So we don't want to touch the very good B tree that is very efficient when it comes to seeking and scanning and stuff like this. So we want to keep this. So in order to make something new, we introduce a non-clustered index. So what is a non-clustered index all about? Basically, it's the same thing. I mean, it's called clustered index because it, the order in the uh, the order in the leaves, right, is also the order that it is stored as. It means um, if we say select star from sample order by ID, actually we are not sorting anything because it, we know it is already in the correct order in this in this doubly linked list. Be careful. It is just in the logical order. That means we can scan it in, uh, by following this, these uh, forward pointers here in this list. But it is not on disk, really physical stored one after another, of course not. But it's, uh, still we can traverse it very easily without doing any sort operation. So a B tree, a non-clustered, is just not stored on, on uh, logically like it is here. That's why it's uh, called a non-clustered index. It's not actually clustered. So what, what can we do with the non-clustered key? Um, we can lay a non-clustered index on the Smiths, uh, on the names as well. So what would then stand, uh, would, would be the data here? Would, what would be here? Would be everything here or here? What, what, what's going on? So we have to figure it out, right? No problem. So for a non-clustered index, the same thing, uh, basically the same thing applies like for a clustered index. In the root node, we have then of course not the IDs, but since we are, putting the uh, non-clustered index on the name, we have all the names here. So we order the names and we say, okay, for this, the first name uh, would be Smith, no, sorry, Miller, then Smith, then Sonny, then we would have the same uh, thing that we have in uh, with the IDs. Then in this, we would find uh, Miller, Smith, Sonny, and so on and so forth, and then we have the, 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 the actual leaves. So, okay, of, again, in the intermediate and the root nodes, we have again the column on which we laid the whole index. In our example, it's name, okay? So it's the same thing. But what is in the pages here? So uh, picture this. There are only two possibilities. Either the whole data for, the, for, those, uh, for this table is, or, uh, is also here in those, leaf, in those leaves or something else. Okay. Think about it. If we would have the data here, what would it mean? What would this mean? This would mean if we store all the data already here, uh, not already, but also like in the clustered, 
index we would duplicate data right we would have a clustered index where we would have all the data in the leaf and then we have would have a non-clustered index where we would have the same data also in the leaves just maybe in a different order but this doesn't really sound right I, I mean I cannot duplicate the data and say it's okay it's not the, the point of databases it's not the point of relational uh, databases so this is not the answer also because Imagine you have here Sony on, on 4 as well and on 5 you have also a Sony. Then you would have a node, you have a leaf node where Sony is stored. Okay, but you need kind three of them because you have three times the row and you would have three nodes with the same name although you wanted to have this cluster, a non-clustered index in place to easing up your query so it makes no sense right so this is also not the answer um, in the pay, in the leaves in the leaves you don't have the data you have only of course the name since we laid the whole thing on the name and you have this so you have for sony here written okay sony has three four five if you have the index only on name and not on, on several columns, this order is basically random. It could also be 4, 3 or 5. It could also be 5, 3, 4, whatever. It doesn't matter. But on, under Sony, you can be sure that you find all of the IDs. So what do you do with this? For instance, you say select star from sample where name is equals Sony. You traverse this non-clustered index because you can find on the base of the name, aha, Sony is here, yup, okay, I find here the, the leaf page where Sony is stored in. And now you see three IDs in whatever order they may be. And with those IDs, you go to the clustered index because you now have the ID and you traverse this one, okay? Makes sense, right? But you have two lookups, but still you, 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 you can look up. I mean, it's, it's beneficial to do two times three scans instead of scanning all the table. Imagine those are hundreds or thousands of rows. So this is a non-clustered index. It's basically the same as a clustered index. Nothing else than just um, in the leaf pages, you don't have the whole data set. You just have the clustered index key of the table or the primary key or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's actually used to then look up on the clustered key. This is called key lookup. So if you ever have an index that satisfy your need and you select star, select star, so you want to have all of this and here you have, from, from if you reach this leaf page, you have only the name and the ID, but no birth date, no gender, no salary whatsoever. You have to do a key lookup means you take the key and look up the rest of the information in the cluster index. So as you can see here for our query select birth date from the bio where name uh, sample where name is called Sony. We have exactly the same situation that I said. We have an index seek here on our uh, non cluster index. And for the other thing, we have to do a key lookup. As you can see here, the seek predicate is where the name is Sony. We are looking for this and we output the ID and then on the key lookup, we see here that uh, we take it, this ID to actually access the, uh, the whole row and then we output the birth date. So one side note for, uh, for, for indexes, uh, for non-clustered indexes. For instance, let's assume our query would be select birth date from sample where name is Sonny, okay? Picture this. Normally we would have to do following, traverse this tree, find for Sony all clustered IDs. Then we take these IDs, go to the clustered index and find all the, the complete data set and take the birth date out of it. This would be a key lookup, but we can do it better. We can say we, we built the non-clustered index on name, including the birth date column. What does this including mean? Including means we have the exact same structure for the B tree like we had before. We have name, 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 and here we have the IDs. But besides the IDs, we add as well the birth date for, son for those Sonys. So here we have also three birth dates, right? So like date, I, date one, date two, date three. Also no particular order. So if we now are looking for this query we stated, select birth date from sample where name equals Sonny, 
we can just take the non-cluster index, traverse to find all the sunnies, and because it includes also on leaf level, of course, the, the birth date, we can already finish with our query. We can already output D1, D2, D3, the three dates. And that's it. We don't even need the clustered index for this. This technique is called covering index. That means basically you can cover your needs with the non-clustered index only because of either the columns that, that is built on contains already all the information or you can include columns. So now let's delete the index we had before and let's create a non-clustered index with include birth date. So what we can see now here in the query plan is that we only have one big seek operator. We don't have any key lookups anymore. This was it for non-clustered index guys. That's basically the whole idea of it. I hope you enjoyed those videos about the indexes and uh, we can of course still dig very very deep in this and we will in a professional video when I uh, talk about data pages because then we can also dig very deep in uh, clustered index indexes and also in heap tables that has no clustered index at all and only use non-clustered index. Very interesting. Thanks for watching for now. If you have questions leave them in the comment section below. Also subscribe to the channel and really try to come up with topics that I can tell you something about. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, we'll talk about some other different cool and fancy stuff next time. Bye bye.